couple of those. I'm sure he's talked about it before. Well, Andy McCluskey is with you now, best known, of course, as the founding member of Orchestral Maneuvers in the Dark, but also a collector, maybe a little lesser known, of uh, North Staffordshire artist Morris Wade. And some of his paintings are going on show in a special exhibition at Trent Art Gallery in Newcastle from the end of next month. Andy, good afternoon. Hey Lee, how are you? I'm very well. It's nice to speak to you. I'm, I'm sure we'll touch on music in a bit, but uh, let's let's zero in on Maurice Wade first of all. So, to you then, what's so special about about him as an artist? Yeah, I, I discovered, discovered Maurice Wade completely by accident in a gallery when I was looking for something else. I just walked in and saw one of his paintings, these large kind of monochrome reproductions of the uh, pottery's landscape. I was just blown away. I'd actually seen it online. I thought it was an abstract because the way he paints, you, the detailing is intense, but he, he captures angles that you wouldn't normally expect, actually, although they're all very obviously pottery's landscapes. And I just love... Love the I love the strength and the power. Um, they're quite melancholy, but they kind of they resonate with, with me in a beautiful way. And I just frankly became addicted. So, how big is your collection then? Well, um, <laughs> I own twenty-one paintings by Morris Wade. They are. I don't need wallpaper in my house. They're <laughs> wall to wall in my house. Um, I've, I've become rather obsessed, and um, I just, I just love the paintings. And um, yeah, they've taken over my life, literally. So you stumbled across him as an artist, and it's, it's quite graphic imagery, isn't it? Like you say, a little bit melancholy, a little bit dark, but you, you can see Stoke on Trent within those images. So you've got 21 pieces. And how did it come to be then that you're now preparing to put them on display in Newcastle? Well, there's a, a fabulous gallery called as you already mentioned, Trent Art Gallery in Newcastle under Lyman. And um, the owner there, Henry Burks, uh, has sold me a couple of paintings and he's as besotted with Maurice Wade as I am. And we just thought, the sad thing is that very few people know of this artist, even in the Stoke area. And so we thought it would be really great if there's some way in which we could raise his profile, get a reappraisal of, of, of the artist's skills and talent. And so Henry said, right, I'll tell you what, we're going to give over my gallery and we're going to strip out everything else and we're going to put all your paintings in, in the gallery in, in Newcastle. And I just thought it was a great idea because, you know, the, I grew up loving art. I mean, art was my, my first love. I took a gap year instead of going to do a degree in fine art. And that's when the band started. I never went to do art. I got sidetracked by my musical hobby. But um, so we, we just thought it would be an opportunity to do that because nobody can see these paintings. That's, that's the selfish thing about being a personal collector is they're in my house, but you can't see them. Well, now you can start in on March the 25th in Newcastle. I don't know. Whether, is it a rude question to ask about what they're worth? I don't know, given that you, he, he, you say that you know. Yes, it's a very rude question. Um, no, I, 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 tell you, I tell you what, before I started collecting them, I wish I started earlier because the prices were considerably less. I seem to have become a one man market for them. But the reality is, they never come up for sale. Yeah. Um, there's only one come to auction in the last 10 years, and that was in New York. And I, 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 I bought that one, I had to have it shipped over. There's, I think that Morris only painted about 320 paintings and these these really are they capture the essence of the industrial landscape they're all bottle kilns and potteries and factories and canals and many people will know these places they'll know these landscapes some of them have changed dramatically I mean, i've got a great painting of hot lane with a giant slack heap in the background that looks nothing like it anymore i mean people in henry knows all these places and people in stoke will know these places yeah. more than i do because I'm, I'm from from merseyside but they just it's just for me it's an opportunity to let people see these and they just when when they're all together I don't know if you know if you go to an art exhibition where all the paintings are by the same artist, they have a, a, a resonance where it's like the sum of the parts become stronger, and there's no people in them. It's all these strange, eerie landscapes, and they're completely, almost completely monochromatic. When you get up close, you can see there's colours in them, and they're all painted with just a palette knife. There's no brush used at all. They're remarkable paintings. So, have you gone on to explore Stoke on Trent then, as a result of seeing these paintings and wanting to see where they were? produced 
I haven't yet because, quite frankly, even the 21 paintings that I've got, um, it would take me a week to go around all the places. And, and there are some places that we don't even know where they are. I mean, if there's anybody listening who's ever heard of a place called the Refugee House in the Stoke area, get in touch with us because we don't know where this house is. Um, there's one painting I have that does have a particular personal resonance because it's the Hanley Victoria Hall. And we played there quite a lot in the early 80s. I have very fond memories of that old place so but there's a lot of other places that I, I, I wouldn't even know where to go when I come down for the exhibition I, Henry has promised that he's going to give me a journey round and we're going to try and match the landscapes as they are now to how they were in the paintings because these paintings were all done from basically 61 to 91 because sadly Morris Way pa- passed away in 91 now you've said that obviously these adorn your house so you're not going to feel a little bit edgy the fact that they'll be leaving it to go on display in Newcastle for a time um, my house is going to look very bare walled. That's for absolutely <laughs> sure. Um, however, no, as I said, it, it, it's, you know, I, I grew up loving seeing paintings in art galleries. Um, and when you see a painting in the flesh, as it were, when you're standing in front of it, it has a completely different impact on you. So for me to offer this opportunity for people to come and see them, it's completely different. I mean, we've made a beautiful book, but even even the book can't do justice to what these things look like in real life. So yeah, it's going to be strange, but it's going to be it's going to be a fantastic opportunity, I think, for for people from the Stoke area to to discover a painter who really should be better. I mean, he should be the Lower of Longport and nobody knows about him do you know what when I was looking at the images uh, I, that was what came to mind to me actually was, was Lowry albeit you, like you say without the people in the images but the, that, that, that dark brooding industrial aspect to them yeah that, that's what leapt yeah, to my right. mind as well the, the white skies, you know, the, the skies are just pure white and, and, then ref, and then they reflect in the canals, although I'm not sure how many of the, the Potteries area canals reflect in pure white sky as perfectly as they do in these paintings. But, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's just an opportunity for, for, for people to see them and they... I, I, they resonate beautifully with me. You know, there's no people in them. They don't have the sentimentality. I think that's one of the things that, that I like about them. They don't have the sentimentality of, of what would normally become called northern artists. I don't actually equate Wade with the northern school. I think he, I think he was actually quite um, was more modernist. The, the way he captured the landscapes, he kind of distilled them down into these just slabs of shapes. It's nice to hear you so enthusiastic about uh, an artist from Wall Stanton, and I guess your, your hope is as well that uh, OMD followers may in turn come and have a, a nosy at the art gallery, so you might just draw people in that way. Yes, I, I, I certainly hope so. Um, we're planning to do, I mean, I'm going to be there for the opening on, on the evening of the 25th, and I would love to say hello to everybody. We're also going to do a book signing the next day, and I think on the next day we're talking to Wedgwood about doing something at the Wedgwood factory, because they commissioned quite a lot of paintings by Wade. In fact, one of the very few places you can actually go and see them in public is at Wedgwood. So he's got some fabulous paintings of, of their factory. So that's a nice local connection that, that we're we're exploring and we hope that's going to kind of come off on Saturday the 26th. Okay. Now, in about, what, 50 minutes' time, we do the 80s mixtape, fairly self-explanatory. You guess where that goes. Are we okay to touch on music for a minute while we got you? Absolutely. Uh, where are things at then with OMD at the minute? I know it's been a, a tricky couple of years, hasn't it? Mm. Well, I, um, due to COVID, I rediscovered the creative power of total boredom, <laughs> <laughs> as I think many people have done. Um, so there will be a new OMD album. Um, it's now being mixed, but because of COVID, all of our playing live plans have been thrown up in the air everything's out of sequence so this it won't happen it won't be released this year we, we we've got a lot of concerts we're still catching up on but um you know we were very lucky in november we, we managed to squeeze a full british tour in between delta and omicron <laughs> and we managed to get 24 people 24 days without catching catching covid so we managed to do a great tour but it's um yeah it's I mean, it's been hard for us. It's been hard for everybody. You know, we, we did Zoom concerts, but there's nothing quite like being in the room with the people on the night, you know. Delta and Omicron does sound like it could be a title of one of your albums, doesn't it? <laughs> 
You know what? <laughs> no, I, uh, yeah, it would. Uh, do you know what? I think people have had quite enough of those two words. They don't want to be buying an album titled that. We do feature OMD quite a bit on the 80s mixtape. Which are, are there any of your tunes that you particularly look forward to playing, and those that you you want to see stay in the back catalogue, or do you still have a love for all of your your previous work? Oh no, I, I'm uh, fortunate to be very proud of almost all of it, and oh, I have a great love for it. Uh, it you know, listen, I've been blessed, you know. I was supposed to go and do an art degree, and I got sidetracked by my music, and I've been doing this now for <clears throat> over 43 years, which I can't believe. Um, so, you know, when I never understand bands who go, oh, I'm bored of that one, our biggest two, we're not going to play it. It's like, no, have some respect for the song, have respect for the people who love the song. So, yeah, we, 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 love, we love playing all the hits. And, you know, yeah, you, you asked me which one. If, if I have to pick one, when we are about to start the drum machine on the intro to Enola Gay, it is like being a poker player who's sitting there with three aces and two kings in your hand. When that drum machine starts, you know you're going to win. It's just going to go great. <laughs> it's a great feeling. Uh, what, what are you feeling towards Hole Again by Atomic Kitten? I'm very proud of that song. Um, a lot of people still to this day don't know that I am I am the man responsible for inflicting Kerry Katona upon herself and the rest of the world. I love her to bits, God bless her, although she's, uh, she's had an interesting life. Um, I love that song. I'm really proud of it. And, and I think it's, uh, you know, I loved working with the girls. And uh, it was, I was retired. My kids were born and I wanted to stay at home. So I tried to do something else. And um, hey, listen, Lee, you know, my only ever British number one was with three teenage girls singing it instead of my ugly self. I should have known all along. <laughs> <laughs> Are you tempted to do more out and out pop? Um, you know, writing and working for other people in, ultimately was a thankless task. Um, and I should know. I should know this as somebody who's in, in in their own band. You know, when you're the artist, when you're the singer, you, when things go well, you think it's because you are a genius, and when they go wrong, you blame everybody else. So, so working with other bands, I didn't like being on the receiving end of that mentality. So I'm I'm quite happy that I unretired myself, and um, I, you know, we are as busy now as we were in the 80s with touring we're still releasing records um, the records are well received which is good there's no point re you know releasing rubbish that nobody wants to hear so that when you play it live they all go to the bar or the loo you know so um, no it's all good but yeah hold again I'm proud of it it's been brilliant to catch up with you and uh, just talk particularly. It's, it's nice to you know, get to the, to the level of, uh, of speaking about an, an artist from Will Stanton uh, and you, you sort of shining a, a spotlight upon him, that being Morris Wade. So you're in Newcastle come the end of the month. You said 25th, you said, didn't you? Uh, yeah, the, the exhibition opens in the evening of the 25th of March. It goes to April the 29th. I will be down there on the Friday and the Saturday uh, doing book signings and, and meeting people. And, um, you know, one of my hopes is, as I say, he painted 320 paintings. Henry and I only know of 180. So a part of this is a, is a hope that people are going to you know as well as rediscovering his ability and going oh wow and he, he painted our local area you know i'll bet you that there are people listening today going well my granny's got a big black and white painting of bot bottle kills on her i wonder if that's a morris wade because we hope that people are going to go i know another one i know another one so not only will his ability and skills be reappraised and he'll get the the honor that he deserves but there's, there's another 140 paintings we don't know where they are so hopefully this will bring them out and your checkbook's waiting I hear <laughs> don't don't I'll get killed if I buy any more <laughs> but then again mm, I don't know um, the, the, the thing is as well as you know I've I've bought every painting I could get hold of that's how addicted I am but they just sell, they seldom come up they seldom come up. So this, this isn't the definitive collection. This is just the Andy McCluskey collection. I'm hoping that as his reputation grows, there will be bigger and even better exhibitions. But for now, this is a starting point of, of, of really getting him back into people's consciousness. And, and, you know, I say, I don't think people in the Stoke area really know this guy's work, and they should. Andy McCluskey of OMD has been with you on BBC Radio Stoke and his love of local artist, Morris Wade. Port Vale.